So tonight we actually have a really good show. Uh, we're going to first jump into one of our annual events here. Um, last year celebrated the 25th anniversary, which was a, you know, a very big event. But this year, a 26th annual Winter Carnival. And, and guess who's hosting? The Snyrec Group, the Snyrec. right? The Snyrec Creation. And the dates are going to be February 10th, 11th, and 12th. I know that working with uh, the casino and a lot of events, these events don't go off just in a day. This is months and months of preparation. Yeah. So who's on the committee? Do we know? Uh, May Green. Okay. That's all I know. Only because I talked to her briefly and I was asking her um, kind of like where they are. And I know that they need events, event coordinators, and event sponsors still. And the deadline for the King and Queen submission and all the events and everything is January 30th so they can print the programs do in want, time. Do you want your name in that? No. Oh, okay, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it does bring up a good point though. Aqua Zosny, we're always looking for volunteers. So this is a really good event. Um, again, check with May, May Green. Resort. Green. Green, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and she can actually get you in, um, in the mix. Mm -hmm. Kind of find out if you want to be an event coordinator, if you want to watch one of the, um, keep scores for the events. And I know that like MCA and Aqua Zosny, um, Mohawk Casino and also the tribe, they do events uh, competing with each other as well. And there's Anthony, other cool events. Yes. Do we, you play broom ball with them? Yes. Or is I, it boot hockey or broom ball? It's or what broom is it? ball. Oh. But just let me put it out there. MCA has been cheating for the last three years. They've been using broom ball shoes. When you got me and wearing regular old tennis shoes. And I think last year, Jalessa had dress shoes on out there playing. Like, <laughs> they cheat. And that's why we've been losing. I'm just letting you know. I'm just putting it out there. Because I was going to say, I don't that's think the tribe has accusation, though. The tribe like, hasn't won in years. Like, everyone has to be hey, on hey. an equal playing field here. <laughs> yeah. Everybody in sneakers, everyone tennis shoes. Even make it more fair, they could all be in like dress shoes, too. So exactly. what kind of events do they have there? Well, this year we're trying to do something different because we really want to get our, our, our elders or our older people to play because mm -hmm. usually you broom balls for your young, your athletic people. So we usually do puzzling, which is a given every year, which the tribe always wins. <laughs> Uh, we want to try to do Ooh, something different. Hurts. We don't want. We don't, <laughs> we don't I like do those little shouts to you know the tribe. <laughs> we don't want to do the Ace the King. We don't do Thirty One. We want to do some different card game. I was thinking Texas Hold'em. So me and Dwayne Thomas we met today and we started discussing events. So we haven't got a finalized schedule yet, but we will, and that will just be strictly for the tribe versus the MCA, the, the other organization. But again, how are people <laughs> going to know about this when it does get finalized? Well, when it gets finalized, the committee will put something out there on Facebook. They usually have a Facebook page yep, and they'll, they definitely, they'll definitely post it out in the public to say, hey, here's mm -hmm. what's going on. So it's, it's a big deal. It's, it's a, this year is a little, it's only three days. Last yeah. year was a huge ordeal because it was like 10 days long. But this year, it will get to the point, we'll have fun and you know, I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, with the introduction of social media, it'd be interesting to see if anyone goes Facebook Live with all the events this year. And the other big thing, too, it gets picked up is there's always an annual king and queen. Yes, yep. and they're taking nominations for that right now. And... Who was last year? I think we have that. It was Mikey Papineau and, and Louise Way. All right. Yep, Wheezy. Yeah, so this year they're going to be looking to crown new king and queen. Uh, maybe we can... Make recommendations for maybe a prince and princess. I don't know how that goes. Princess. I'll be the court jester. <laughs> <laughs> Always here with jokes. <laughs> All right. So once again, the 26th mm -hmm. annual winter carnival coming up right here in Aquasasi. Snai Recreation is hosting. Um, Amber, once again, you want to go over the dates? Sure. Um, the dates for the Winter Carnival are February 10th, 11th, and 12th. And a deadline for all the events and everything is the January 30th to print the programs in time. Right. And just like Anthony was saying as well, um, they are going to be working on the events, uh, him and Dwayne Thomas. So more to come on that. And so with that, we're going to go to a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Brassworth Pizzeria and Lounge, home of the award-winning wings. Whatever your family is hungry for, Brassworth Pizzeria can serve it up. From subs and wraps and the famous award-winning Jumbo Wings. Call today at 518-358-6122, pickup or delivery. If you're looking for a relaxing night out, maybe catch a game or pay-per-view fight, the Brass Horse Lounge is the place to head. Friendly faces, relaxing environment, and the patio is now open. Brass Horse Pizzeria and Lounge. When it matters most, trust your medical transportation needs to We Care Transport Services. Our DOT certified and fully insured ambulance and Medicab service treats your loved ones like our own. They're not, we're not only their patients, we become their friends. And the, all the employees are like that. Our name is our mission. We care about getting you to the medical services you need. Even sometimes when we get to a doctor's office, well, how'd you get here? Then it gives us another opportunity to say, We Care brought us here. <laughs> all right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we are the Aquasessing Review, and we're going to jump right into segment number two of our show. 
and that's ongoing efforts to stop the Dakota Access Pipelines. And I know Akwazasni actually has a really good initiative, uh, brought on by Stephen Thomas Oaks, who is the creator of Destination Stephen, Standing Rock. Stephen Thompson Oaks. What did I say? Thomas, that's okay. Oh, Stephen Thompson <laughs> so Oaks, my apologies. So he has a Facebook, yeah. group, Facebook group, right? And, um, Destination Standing Rock, because he did spend some time out there. Mm -hmm. He's helped people get there. He's very active. He's he is. doing fundraisers. He's very interested in everything. Like he, he's always posting things, right? Like. Um, Everything. But what I like about it is that he, he knows that not everybody has an opportunity to go out to Standing Rock. So yep. he's bringing those efforts back here to the community and saying, what can we do, what efforts, big or small, to actually help stop this pipeline? So what's happening right now is the next step is divesting the money from the major contributors, right? That contribute S to the pipeline. So yep. the hashtag divest, D-A-P-L, is what everybody's been using. And that's one of the things you can do locally is take your money out of, there's a whole list of banks, <laughs> right? <laughs> there's a whole list of banks. <laughs> and what you want to do is use more community banks. Um, yeah, right. CECOM's fine. Credit, un <laughs> credit, credit unions, unions, more yeah. like, yes. Yes. Instead of those big banks like Chase, Wells Fargo, those big banks, because those are the billionaires that are building this funding, pipeline or yeah. funding this pipeline. And so right, they're advocates for it because they see money in the back end as well. And, and the way to hurt billionaires is how they think is their pockets. And mm -hmm. when you start hurting in their pockets, then they'll start paying attention to your movements or whatever it may be. But until we start hurting them in their pockets, then we, we're just... But again, uh, this is interesting eye. because it's about creating that awareness. Mm -hmm. And on our notes here, there was an interesting statistic on how much money was actually withdrawn. Nearly $30 million has already been withdrawn from banks. So basically the momentum is building and we want to continue building. And so people are taping it. You know what I mean? Yes. I, one of, like in the very beginning, there was a video of a guy who had walked into a bank and was yep. taping sitting with the bank person was like, no, I'm taking all my money on. They were like, you know, why, do you, why are you gonna do that? And he's like, this is why. And he laid it all out and you know, told them, and this is why I'm doing it. So it kind of turned into a big initiative yeah. to have, to tape it. Everybody was like, tape it. Go in there, tell them why you're taking your money out of their bank and why you're transferring it. And I think that's kind of what the hashtag started, too. Yeah, I even was at a football game. Yeah, even at a football game. There's a football game, a live football game. A guy dropped a banner from the ceiling of the Vikings-Chicago Bears game at a U.S. US Bank Stadium because they're a big, they're a big contributor to the pipeline. And, it, like you said, they want to put it out there, and they're putting it on Facebook. They're doing a lot of things that, to draw attention to it. And okay, let's aware. back up. I mean, last year we talked a lot about trying to get the awareness out, utilizing social media, utilizing, uh, practically begging the major channels to kind of pick this up. Mm -hmm. And now the momentum's just huge. So everybody knows about it. Now it's getting garnering attention at a national level through NFL games, and now people are taking money out. What's the next step? Just keep doing it, I guess. You know, like it, make it spread the word. That's the best thing you can do. I spread the word and really believe in it. Um, you have to get your. To me, you have to get your whole tribal membership to believe in it. You have to get. I have to divest. You have to divest. We all have to believe in it. We have to stand together, like like they did at the pipeline, like they did at the actual in, in North Dakota, like they did. We have to, as a united front, do it because you think about it. We have a lot of money as Native Americans, just in general. We have big casinos, little casinos. If we start divesting, we can really impact them, and that becomes awesome and huge. Right, and when we talk about that, we also talk about um, even people within our own community. For example, I mean, there was a question posed on Facebook, for example, um, in terms of the casino utilizing Chase, which is a major contributor for the access pipelines. And you Actually, know, Stephen posted a picture of a casino a paycheck, right? And a they check. blacked it all out except for the big Chase logo on it. So he and posted it and, and everybody kind of went. awareness and I know that um, our general manager, Shannon Keel, posted on there. Can you tell a little bit about what she had said? She had just said that um, that they bank with Key Bank, but that the ADP, which obviously does all the payroll and everything, they're the ones that bank with Chase and that she did, uh, from her own personal Facebook page, say that it was something that, they were looking you know, that into. maybe uh, management would discuss this. You know, right. she thanked him for bringing the attention to it and stuff like that. So I thought that was great, you know, like. Again, bring in awareness. And I, I probably would I don't even know what our check looks like, but I don't, I wouldn't have never even noticed probably. Yeah, we're, we're with, I mean, <laughs> we're with the same company, ADP, and so right. we're dealing with the same issues at the tribe too. But so. I'm glad that at least we get to clarify, mm -hmm. at least from a tribal standpoint, 
that we are utilizing a service, a software program with Chase, and it's not necessarily banking Us dealing with, directly exactly with. with. Yeah, cool. okay, cool. Well, again, um, I mean, this was important for the community to know, but also for the community to get forward and, and back up. So uh, with that, we're gonna go to another quick commercial break. We will be right back. Joseph's Fine Jewelry offers a variety of gold, silver, rose gold, yellow, and white gold. Joseph's also buys gold and have a variety of brand names such as Uno to 50, Belova, Thomas Sabo, Winauer, and Obaku. Joseph's Fine Jewelry offers jewelry repair, cleaning, and one of their friendly associates can customize any piece to your desire. Tax free. So when you say jewelry, say Joseph's Fine Jewelry. When it matters most, trust your medical transportation needs to We Care Transport Services. Our DOT certified and fully insured Ambulet and Medicab service treats your loved ones like our own. They're very responsive and they're very reliable when I call. They take my information and they tell me the times they're going to pick me up. Our name is our mission. We care about getting you to the medical services you need. I just think that I, I've been blessed to have them. So welcome back, everybody. We have a segment for the new year. New year, new you. <laughs> new who? New me? New you. New me? <laughs> oh, okay. New me. So in studio today, we have a special guest, Laura Tarbell. She's a certified trainer and nutritionist. She's a Pilates and soon to be yoga instructor and our very own WOW Ninja. Welcome, yes. Laura. Thank you for having Welcome. me. <laughs> <laughs> so New Year's Eve, um, New Year's new resolutions, right? Yep. Who has resolutions, yep. Benny? Small resolution I was just talking about a little bit earlier. I'm trying to kick the Diet Pepsi habit. It's been about two weeks. Yay. and uh, Let's see how far I get. Benny. I've been like a little bit jonesing here. And you so feel better? I feel better. Good. Yeah. Anthony, Next good. step is a gym. Well, health-wise, <laughs> it was just to drink one mountain, one mountain do a day. <laughs> Wait, how many were you drinking? Don't tell I, was Laura. Trying, I was probably drinking like, I don't <laughs> know, three, four, five, six. <gasps> I don't know. As many as it took as to get through the day. Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother me. Caffeine doesn't bother me. I'll drink it just before I go to bed, too. That didn't keep mm -hmm. me up. So, yeah, that was a healthy one, but the other one was to be nicer to my kids. Okay, but. And like, nicer to your co hosts? Yeah, yeah, that oh, too. Okay, okay. Awesome. So, um, I don't know if I made one. I didn't really. I was supposed to get back to the gym. <laughs> we are supposed to get back to the gym. <laughs> we were supposed to get back to the gym, and I haven't yet because what's the resolution failure weight? Failure rate, Laura. It's uh, it's actually pretty sad. Only eight percent of people achieve their resolutions. Mm -hmm. um, you actually have a higher chance of getting cancer or heart disease than you oh. do of. I know, I know. That's following awful. through with your resolution. Following through with your resolution. That's awful. So Aww. when you mentioned, you know, just setting a small res resolution, that's actually okay. That's actually a good thing because it's something that you can actually do. Right. Well, I guess so that was one of my questions right? towards you is like, what would you tell to the average person that's trying to set this big lofty goal? And I guess you kind of answered it. Mm -hmm. Small, attainable, something you can measure. Something you can build on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. And, and give yourself, you know, uh, goal dates as well. You know, a time right. to finish it by, you know, making it through the first month of January, maybe without okay. drinking any, any soda. And then, you know, then start getting through February, you know, one day at a time. Then they say yeah. not to reward yourself with food and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Like have rewards, like maybe buy a new coach purse. That, if yes. you make it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. No other season, options, Anthony, you know, give you, get your, a massage, okay. a facial, things like that, you know. A new coffee cup, Ooh. things like that. Fun, a new fun coffee things cup. like that. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome, Laura. So what do you got going on now? Um, well, we have a lot of things coming up actually right now. Um, we're in the middle of a WOW challenge, um, mm -hmm. and we are starting off really strong. I'm excited about the 20 women that are in this challenge. Um, they seem all really pumped up about it um, and are supporting each other through our private Facebook group, which is really great. Um, we have the WOW camp coming up the end of mm -hmm. January. It's almost sold out. Um, I work for Strong Magazine doing their camps, and then I also do my own personal camps. Um, and I think this one is going to be the best one that I've put on so far. Wow. Um, I've got a friend of mine coming from Saratoga to teach some classes, and she is a firecracker of, a, of an instructor. Um, I have a nutritionist friend that's coming from Toronto who is a walking encyclopedia of nutrition. She blows my mind. Um, and then I have actually my life coach and my business coach who is going to be Skyping in from Georgia um, to do a presentation on confidence and overcoming self-doubt and that's um, her presentation actually is really what changed my life mm -hmm. a couple of years awesome. ago um, so I'm really excited that they're all going to be involved what, what does WOW stand for women of worth 
So really oh, believing that women you're of worth. worth. Yes. As any women of well, worth. Is there a Mal? We need to start a Mal. Like Mo? <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm just curious. No, but for anybody that goes to heart to heart, you know, I've been there many mornings where we see a platoon of women in the gym <laughs> and they're doing these exercises. And it's so amazing, the energy levels up there. And then I see that you're sprinting on that track. Right. I haven't been there in a while, but it's it's pretty empowering just to watch. Well, speaking of exercise, Benny. <laughs> We're in for a treat because earlier, Laura demonstrated some of her signature moves and we tried them out. So, let's take a look. So, Laura, <sighs> I'm ready. It's been a long time since I've been to the gym, you know. Yeah, that's okay. I've kind of fall, fallen off the wagon. So, how? what are some things I can do to ease back into it? Um, well, first thing, don't expect to jump right back in where you left off. Mm -hmm. You know, start slow, listen to your body. Um, and also, don't compare yourself to anybody else that's at the gym. You know, if this is your chapter one, your first day back, don't compare yourself to someone who's on their chapter 12, who's been going consistently for three, four years. Um, and just know that those people too um, have been where you are. You know, we've all had injuries, where we've had to take time off, or pregnancies. Um, so we've all been at that chapter one where we're just getting started back up there. So just know that, um, you know, the other WOW ninjas that you see, um, the other people at the gym, they're there to support you and uh, and uh, we're your biggest cheerleaders. Because it is a little intimidating sometimes. Like, I've been to one boot camp class. <laughs> I think I've been to a couple wows, but I did, I even went to the advanced wow. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's a little <laughs> intimidating because some of those girls are amazing. Like a lot of those girls, all those girls are amazing, but yeah. it's hard for somebody like being last all the time and you know, so mm -hmm. it's a little intimidating. So what can people assure, like how can you assure people that it's okay to go and like all the, things can be changed, right? Different levels, even if you do go to boot camp, right. and you can't keep up with the fastest runners, right? So, mm -hmm. and some of the things can be modified, correct? Yes, everything can be modified. Um, if you're not a runner, you know, we can sub in the bike, the elliptical, um, you know, there's all, kind of all kinds of variations that we can do for you. Um, and just remember that you'll be making progress. Every time you come to the gym, it's a step forward. And even small progress is progress, progress. nonetheless. Yes. So, you know, soon you'll be up there and you'll be in encouraging the people who are coming last because yeah. you'll be in the middle or you'll be up at front. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, show me what we can do today. Alrighty, so this this is an exercise to help with your posture. Um, you know, we have uh, a lot of people who sit at a desk all day long or who are driving maybe for a good portion of the day and their posture is slouching. So this is an exercise for your upper back to help strengthen those muscles and improve your posture. And you can do this at night while you're watching TV, maybe during the commercials, do a few reps. So it's really easy to incorporate into your day. So you're just gonna hook a resistance band, which you can find these, you know, even at Walmart, they're everywhere. Hook a resistance band around your foot mm -hmm. and with your palms down, you're gonna sit up tall and you're gonna pull your elbows up high and squeeze your shoulder blades together in back. Elbows up high and squeeze and press my chest out. <laughs> yeah, press your chest out just a little bit okay. and then slowly return back to where you started. Okay, I think I can tighten this up a little. Yep. So straight up like this. Yep. Feel that squeeze in back and then control it and forward. Control forward. Good, and again, to increase resistance, you're just gonna grab a little bit lower. A little bit lower. Make it a little tougher. You know, and doing this, you know, maybe three sets of ten is going to make a big, big difference in your posture. Um, I need over that because I sit at desk all day. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so Benny, we're going to work on some core stability here today. Okay. So we're moving down to the mat. We're going to do some side planks. Basic motion of side plank. You're going to be on your elbow, setting okay. it up just underneath your shoulder. Knees are bent. Mm -hmm. and you're going to lift your hips up so that you're even in line with the rest of your body. Fingertips reach up to the ceiling. So have you try that there, okay, hold it for people. a little bit. No judgment, just to let you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm here. Yep, elbow underneath the shoulder. Keep that okay. shoulder down away from the ear. Okay. So stability through now there. Now I just sit up. Yep, and then hips a little bit more forward. Good, then to make it, um, turn it into a rotational move, you're gonna thread the needle. So you're taking your fingertips, reaching them back toward me, and then back up to the ceiling. Awesome, perfect. Piece of cake. Right, one more time. <laughs> Good. All right, Anthony, are you ready? <laughs> we save the best for last here. So we're gonna start off with a basic functional exercise. Wait, 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 what's functional? 
So a functional exercise is an exercise that will mimic the motions that you do in everyday life or in sports. So we're going to be doing a squat to start with. We do squats all the time, you know, picking up our kids, or we're picking up you know, our house, cleaning our house, things like that. So I don't do any of those, so okay, yeah, we'll go along with it. Take my word for it. Okay. All right, so we're going to pick up our dumbbells. Feet are going to be hip distance apart, parallel to each other. You're going to drive your heels through the floor. So okay. your heels will be glued to the floor. They're not going to come up. You're, as you bend down, your knees are going to come at the same angle as your middle toe. Okay, so we keep those legs parallel to each other. And you're actually going to take your toes, you're going to curl them up, like you're going to hook them up oh. to the top of your shoes. Okay. That's going to help keep your heels down. So as we lower into our squats, we're bending our knees, keeping your head up so we keep our back straight and we don't tip over forward. Then we're going to press through the heels, come all the way up. Okay, so that's a basic squat. So we're gonna keep going here a little bit. You keep going, I'll check out your form. Oh, really? I gotta keep going. <laughs> Good, so you're going just as low as you can. Um, obviously, the lower the better, the more muscle fiber you're gonna work. But of course, with injuries, knee injuries, hip injuries, uh, or any kind of tightness there, the amount of depth is gonna be different for each person. So let's make this a little bit harder. You ready? We'll take sure. it to the intermediate level. Okay. So we're gonna go into our squat. As we come up, we're going to curl the dumbbells and then press up overhead. So now we're getting an upper body exercise in as well. And you start feeling your heart rate get up a little bit, get a little bit more out of breath. Good. As you reach overhead, you want to keep your rib cage down so that you keep the core activated so we don't over arch through the back. Good. So I call this a smart exercise because you're doing a lot at once and you're using your time really effectively. Okay, how we doing? Yeah, I'm good. Good? Are you ready to take it up one more level? Let's take it up one more notch. All right, we're gonna go for it. So these are the man makers. Yay. Okay. All righty, so we're coming down into our squat again, but this time dumbbells go on the floor. Then you're gonna jump your feet back into a plank. Okay, do a push up. Okay, row, so hand to uh, waist, each side. Jump forward, back into our squat and press. All the way up. Good, keep going. Push up. Oops, sorry. No, row. Yeah, row. Row. Forgot about the rows. Jump forward and then press all the way up. Woo. Good. So if you do 10 of those all at once, I mean, I'll be a it's going to be. Yes, be you, will. Yes. yes, you will. Yes, you will. You'll be a wow ninja. Is yes. Be. No, a mow. <laughs> a mow ninja. A mow ninja. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Thank you. At Marlarney's Garden Center, we have ways to heat your house easily. With over 20 models of Harman pellet stoves in stock, you can choose the right size and style to match your home. These Harman stoves can heat your home for less than $1,000 a year and have a thermostat for even heating. At Marlarney's, we sell and service monitor and toil stove vented heaters for 28 years, and we also do free estimates. If your fuel bill is killing you, Marlarney's can save your life and save you money. So come visit us today. The Akwesasne Cultural Center is a public library and museum that serves the people of Akwesasne, the surrounding communities, and the visiting public. The library has many services to offer, a computer center with color printing and Wi-Fi access. The museum has self-guided tours with exhibits and cultural information and a gift shop. There is a small admission fee and is free to Native Americans. Please call in advance to schedule guided tours for visitors, school groups, and organizations. Welcome back to our favorite segment. It's become one of our most popular segments too, right guys? Yeah, like it's absolutely. Fun. It's fun. It's called the Spotlight, where we go out in the community, we find somebody that is doing something extraordinary, and we tell somebody about it. And it's so awesome because it's local. That's exactly. what's the good thing about it, it's local. And I think that's why it gets so many views. Absolutely. So I have a special one, but shh, we'll wait to that one. Oh, we're gonna save the best for last, yes, are we? Yes, we are, All right, well, always. I'm, I'm gonna go first on this. Um, <laughs> now you were talking about people um, being spotlighted, but I'm actually gonna spotlight a couple people. Um, we're actually gonna keep them anonymous, but they started a Facebook page. We talk a lot about social media and the importance of what it does to our community. Well, a page was started and, it was, and it's called Akwazasni pay it forward. Now the initiative is basically saying there are a lot of community members in need, but there's also a lot of community members that are really trying to give things away. So it's a perfect partnership. Mm -hmm. So this Facebook page actually allows people to go on there and say, I have clothes, I have um, baby um, high chairs and, and strollers to give away if there's somebody that needs it. Needs it now you yeah. can go on there. 
Now, Amber, we talked a little bit about the rules. What are some of the rules that you know of? I mean, there are 16 rules There's for this. There's a but lot it's, of it's rules, but it's good. I think there needs to be because um, if not, you get some people that take advantage, right? right? So I think there's like a limit to what you can take from the day. And if you take something, you have to give something back, pay it forward. Right. And again, so you can check this out on Aquazas and you pay it forward. It's a really uh, cool idea. And again, the power of social media. So Amber, what do you have for your spotlight? Well, I'm going to spotlight the Thompson brothers because on January 7th, they played a lacrosse game and set the setting the Guinness World Record for the most siblings to compete in the same professional lacrosse game. That's How amazing them, is right? that? Yeah, That's it. They were calling it Four Brothers, One Game. Like, isn't oh, that amazing? Wow. So who awesome. do they play for? I know one of them, Georgia Swarm. Georgia yep. Swarm and Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan. Rush. 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 Rush, yes. So, like, the Guinness Book of World Records is the authority on... Records. On record, <laughs> record-breaking <laughs> achievements. Yeah, records. Making, yeah. uh, it says, to make the amazing official. So they're officially they're amazing. Offici they were officially amazing before Guinness Book of World Records. I can you can ask anybody here, they're amazing people. So yeah, my shout out is to Jerome, Jeremy, Miles, and Lyle. Awesome guys, way to go. Mm, kudos. Okay. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I have the best spotlight of the new year. Always. Man. I have the cutest spotlight of the year. And the next one, he's available, ladies. Just letting you know. <laughs> Dane Thomas, get in here. Yay! Yay. Oh, Dane. Hi, Dane. Hi. How are you? Good, you. You a little nervous? Yeah. Don't be a little nervous. Don't be nervous, Dane. It's okay. You're going to be great. Let's get in a little bit closer. I'm not going to bite you, I promise. Okay? <laughs> so, this is what happened. His dad, who's your dad? Dwayne Thomas. Dwayne Thomas. I think we all know Dwayne Thomas. He's got one of the biggest mouths on the res. We all know Dwayne Thomas. <laughs> okay? <laughs> He doesn't really brag or put out on social media. And something caught my attention. He even forewarned us. I don't really talk about my kids, but I'm going to talk about them. And he brought this story to, to, to the Facebook world. And I had to get tissue. I was literally crying because it was a heartfelt warming, just melt your heart. Oh, just thinking about <laughs> it, I'm starting to cry. So if I cry, don't, don't get all emotional. It's OK to cry, right? <laughs> so Dane, first of all, let's get your age. How old are you? 10. What school do you go to? Jefferson. Is that, in, where's that at? Messina. Okay, Messina. So, will you just preface and tell me what happened? Uh, yeah, a kid in my class said he wasn't going to have Christmas. So one day when we were coming home from hockey practice, I asked my dad if we could stop at Walmart and buy them gifts. So I bought him three, and I remembered he had a little brother, so I bought him three gifts too. And then the next day, we bring them to school and I gave it to him. And then he bring them home. And then on Christmas Eve, other f people from the community helped. Uh, someone, some people donated money and gift cards. And the uh, Sinai School Food Pantry donated five boxes of food. And the Red Rum Motorcycle Gang uh, donated a lot of presents. Okay, let's clear that up. Motorcycle club, <laughs> not a gang. <laughs> it's a club, we understand. <laughs> He's a little nervous, we're good, we're good. But just hearing that gives me chills because what, why? Let me just, why would you do something like that? Because mm, every family needs a Christmas. Aw. See? I'm gonna cry, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> and, and again, it was, it was on Facebook on Dwayne Thomas and this was what the spirit of Christmas is. This is our future. This isn't really truth. It's not our future. This is our now. And guys, we are making a big impact. Parents, you make a big impact on your children's lives. And just hearing your story is just amazing. And like I said, I'm about to tear up now just talking about it. You're an amazing kid. And I, I hope you continue to do great things, Dane. Thank you, Dane. I was going to say on behalf of all of us, good job. Thank you so much. <laughs> we need more good people job. like you. I'll tell you what. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us with Aqua's Lesson Review. That's the end of our show for today. So with that being said, we say onagiwaha. Bye.